Okay, so... All right, so you you riding around, you're going from place to place. You're going to Jack the Rapper. You're going to How Can You? I Be Down. You 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 giving Wendy Day your tape. You you're moving all over the place. That was the part. That right was there. yeah. Okay, Wendy so. Day giving giving Wendy Day the tape. Um, two weeks later, she called me, and I was like, holy shit! And mm. she was like, you have restored my faith in white rappers. And I'm like. Thank you. Cool. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You. I don't even know how to take that one. Yeah, like, yeah. thanks a lot. Really? Right. Yeah, I'm not sure how to take that, <laughs> cool, but right? yeah. I'm sure cool. there's a compliment yeah, in cool. there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, At least you meant it to be. Yeah. Yeah, no, the fact she called me was incredible. Like, I just... Because every time I would be at the breaking point of, like, giving this shit up, because it just seemed to be going nowhere, and I would spend so much time on it, every spare second I had, I was writing all the time. And I felt like this might not happen. Then I'd get a little spark that would keep me going just a little bit more. So she wanted to put me on her five-man battle team for the Rap Olympics. So did uh, did she fly me out? I can't remember. Yeah, she brought you out to New York first to meet the team. That's Paul Rosenberg, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so, so I met her... her five-man battle team that she was building to try to go to the rap olympics because it was like teams or something so i rap for them i rap for those guys and and they wanted me on the team so then uh we ended up flying to i ended up flying to california for the rap olympics scribble jam i went to the scribble jam and i battled juice like a hundred times and me and, him, me and him kept tying so then the very last battle I end up losing so then I'm like fuck and then that's when Wendy Day called after that I think and flew me out to when, when after the New York thing and mm-hmm. I was accepted on the team flew me out to California and there was a battle before our five man battle team was, was supposed to, to battle mm-hmm. and I had just got evicted from the house I was staying at literally the day before I'm supposed to go to Rap Olympics. You got thrown out. Yeah. Evicted this out. You gotta leave. Yeah. I pull up to the to the house and all our shit is on the front lawn and people are going through it. They're like they stole my my, my boy Butter's turntables and shit. Like it it was fucked. <laughs> I, I personally want to get Butter some turntables. I feel <laughs> fucking crazy. Yeah. So People were going through our shit. I, I didn't have much to grab, but I put it all in my car and shit. And I re- somehow I got a cell phone and I cannot, I still can't remember this to this day because I had to break into the house I was evicted from through the back door. Mm-hmm. And the motherfucker had no heat in the house. <laughs> but the guy, that, it, it, this is a long story, but basically the guy we were paying rent to was not paying the rent. Oh. So we were like, he was, I, something happened. I don't know, whatever. But he didn't own the house, so he wasn't, he must not have been paying the rent or something. So anyways, I, I break into the house, sleep on the floor, and Paul, w- Paul was my wake-up call. And so you guys go back that far. Yeah, I, I met him at the hip-hop shop back when he first started freestyling back there. Proof introduced me to him. That's big. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so, so carry on. So, Paul, Paul called you. Paul called me. Got up for the for the flight, and then flew out to L.A. And the reason I say like every, this this meant everything to me because the the I didn't know that the the, the battle that was taking place before the Rap Olympics mm-hmm. was whoever wins that gets mm-hmm. five hundred dollars and a Rolex. I don't know why what the Rolex was about. Yeah, and if the prize was only five hundred, then how the fuck did they get the Rolex? Right. Like, that's the fuck yeah. I'm trying to make out. Gazy. <laughs> yeah. Street. Yeah. Straight food gaze. <laughs> so I end up going through. I end up going through everybody, right? Like, I end, I I jump in that battle because I need that money. Because mm-hmm. I don't have a home to go back to. So mm, I get all the way to the end, and there's a guy that shows up there, like two thirds through the battle. And they let him in. Hmm. And he only had to beat one person and then get to me. I had to go through, I don't know. He, he had to mm-hmm. buy to the, to the semifinals. Yeah. That's crazy. Because that means oh, you're, you're running through a lot of shit in your head, too. Yeah. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're depleting yeah, your... I'm trying to I'm trying to mix punchlines, like written shit, with freestyle shit. Yeah. You know, and throw, like, because I watch Proof do that. Like, a, a, he was masterful at it. So, that's kind of where I learned to do that. And, uh... We get all the way to the end, and then when they hand me the mic, and I'm supposed to battle this guy, after I went through everybody, 
This guy, I, I get the mic, and this guy walks behind the video screen. They had a screen there because they were showing something. I don't remember what it was. But remember, he walked behind the video screen, and I had nobody to battle. I couldn't talk about his shoes. I couldn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I had no one to bet. Oh, in sure. hindsight, I should have said said something like, you're scared, that's why you're hiding behind that screen. Like, but, right. but in the moment, I didn't know what to do. Mm. So I choked. And then he comes from around the screen and just gets in my face. I don't remember one line he said, but he was screaming in my face. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I don't. And everybody's like, oh, he's killing him, he's killing him. But I had already choked. So it really didn't matter what the guy did. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get it. And uh, I lost. So I was like, fuck. That, at that point, it was looking really bleak. And this, this kid comes up to me. It's like 18-year-old kid, right? He comes up to me. And he's like, yo, man, can I get one of those CDs? And I'm like, I just kind of threw it at him. Like, whatever. At the time, I didn't know... That that was um, he this this kid Dean Geislinger that worked at Interscope, right? So he ends up giving the the CD to Jimmy, and I don't know. I hear the story that that Dre had come over or something, and the CD was like in a box or something. Yeah. Mm. I see. I don't. I don't know that part because I don't think me and he Dre. Brought, he brought demos home to listen to on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and Dre Dre came over to the gym and he saw the box and he he saw your demo. He was like, "Yo, who's that?" And Jimmy's like, "I don't know. Some some guy. They say he's great. You should listen to it. It's a rapper." Yeah. So, mm. so we, me and the Bass Brothers, uh, the production team I was working with, we go to, we had to order the Slim Shady EP that that we pressed up started actually moving some decent amount of. Uh, units, you know, mm-hmm. it was like a thousand and two thousand. And mm-hmm. we had a we had a guy in Vegas. They had a guy that wanted to buy five thousand of them. So we were like, oh shit! So we go yeah. to Vegas. Yeah, <clears throat> we start running around putting the shit on consignment mm-hmm. in, in different stores and stuff. I come back to the hotel just from doing that, and Marky Bass uh, was like, "Yeah, hey, we got a car from some doctor." <laughs> <laughs> he, wants, Chiropractor. he wants to meet with you The doctor wants to see you? Oh, yeah <laughs> Is everything so okay? Like, yeah <laughs> right. So I'm like, don't fuck with me Don't fuck with me Do not fuck with me Because I remember I was in the car with these two chicks Before I Right before I went out to Vegas to sell the tapes And I was like They, they were uh, playing phone tap These two chicks in the car were playing phone tap And I was like, yo, if I could just get with Dre Oh my god and then, literally a week later, we got a meeting with Dre when we go out there. Wow. And then he walks in, and I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Hey, what's up? My name is Dre. That was it. And then and then the next thing I know, I'm in Foot Locker with, with Curtis Tucker. Mm-hmm. And, and she's getting outfits for the Just Don't Give a Fuck video. And I see you. And I'm like, yo, he's in here by himself. Like, I, I was bugging the fuck out. Like... I don't. When you 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 quoted a lyric back to me and you said, "Yo, you said how can I be white? I don't even exist." And you quoting that lyric back to me was like, "I think I shit myself." I, I'm pretty sure I actually literally shit myself. But you know what, man? You said a lot of really cool shit. Like you know, like I loved when you said "come back harder than a cannabis response." Like it's so oh. shit you said. Like I fucking like you know. <clears throat> there's certain people that. You know, the shit just moves you. Like on that fucking Renegade record, you know, with you and Jay, you know, just the way you would, the fluidity. Forget, you know, I'm, you know, forget comparisons or who was dope and all that. Fuck all that. Just your your fluidity on that track, the mel- the melody, your sense of key. When I say key, I mean like the key, the notes, like yeah. being on key with the track. And also the interesting way that you find little bits of in the track and rap to shit that's in the track that has nothing to do with necessarily the drum or snare other than being rhythmically on beat, but you find other little shit. Like, all that shit matters. Yeah. Um, and I think that... I think there's very, very, very safe to say that you 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 demolished all stereotypes that existed for white rappers. I think that that is very safe to say on Rock the Bells Radio because I think... I think before you, um, BC Boys, who I love, who, you know, are very talented and great music makers, don't get me wrong, different, lyrically, they're not, 
you know, like pure MC MCs, you know, may, may, you know, add rest in peace and the rest, but, but they are great music makers and real, they make really good records. Um, and, you know, searching them had some moments, um, you know, like that search record, here we go and, and gas face third base. They had some moments, but I think as far as an MC, I think for the general public, you know, and for, for rap audiences and for classic hip hop fans, you are really hip hop's first white MC that was really looked at as an MC, like fuck all of the fucking, you know, yeah. you can, you know, you, we can talk all that bullshit we want, but your shit was real regardless. You know what I mean? So, um,